So hello, hello everyone. This is the Student Witch and welcome again to my channel and I'm about to share with you all of my tarot and oracle de decks, excuse me, that I own up until now at the t the current time of this recording which is December 7th, 2017. This is going to be uh, me sharing the oracle and tarot cards that I own uh, that are in my very small collection. <laughs> I don't exactly know the number of decks that I have right now, but um, it's fairly small. It's slowly growing. I'm very kind of... It takes me a while to finally bite the bullet and decide to buy a deck. Um, so, and I, I really like to go like balls deep <laughs> into a deck um, before I move on and maybe purchase another one and of course I always like to come back and revisit an old deck so yeah my collection isn't that big that's why I can fit everything into one video so let's get into it and I'll try to keep this more or less in chronological order in the order that I acquired these decks so this deck right here this is my grandmother's tarot deck it is the Hoi Polloi um, deck it was printed in 1972 and yeah this was my grandmother's deck it is straight out from the 70s with the color scheme as you can tell it is a Rider Waite Smith clone and this was the very first tarot deck that I was ever exposed to I remember my grandmother pulling this out um, she kinda kept this hidden in a a drawer in one of the guest bedrooms in their house. She didn't pull it out too often, so I, I have no idea. Unfortunately, she passed away when I was 12 years old, so I, I never got a chance to ask her, like, how did she use it? How often did she use it? Um, did she consider herself a reader? Or was she more just curious? I know she was kind of into the whole, like, psychic kind of thing, so I... I would have loved to have had that conversation with her, but unfortunately she she died in 2000, so um, I never got the chance. But I did inherit her tarot deck, which is one of my most cherished worldly possessions. Like, I will run into a burning building to save this deck, <laughs> if I could. Um, I don't use this for readings myself. I keep this on the ancestor altar in her honor and in her memory. Um, and I usually keep the lover's card face up and the strength card face up um, so that she, she knows that she can help support me and my husband and um, help give me strength in times of Whoa, in trouble. <laughs> so this is my, the very first deck that I bought myself. Um, I think I bought it sometime around April or May 2015. So that was when I really first started researching and learning about the tarot. This is just the cheap yellow box US Games edition. I have it in very specific order um, because I no longer use this deck to do readings, even though I had very powerful readings with this deck, but I, I kind of moved on and I've replaced this edition of the Rider Waite Smith with the much more aesthetically pleasing Centennial edition. So my plans with this deck is to um, to actually glue this into my grimoire. Um, I have a big ass grimoire. And I, I kind of have my own numerological system with understanding the tarot and how the minor arcana relates to the major arcana. So I'm planning to straight up glue these cards into my grimoire and then take notes um, in my grimoire about them. But yeah, this is the cheap, gaudy U.S. Games yellow box edition which was the first deck I got, so it holds a special place in my heart, but I, I believe I have moved on. Next deck, the very first uh, Oracle deck that I got myself, let me find the box and the book, 
was the Shaman's Oracle. Here's the box. I learned about the Shaman's Oracle um, via Anya Orga's channel because she talked about this deck and how she worked with it and organized it and how she made it work for her. This is the, the guidebook here. Color images. And um, the Shaman's Oracle being the very first Oracle deck that I ever got, um, it makes a lot of sense now that I'm working with my matron, my matron being Mama Creatrix, uh, the ancient Paleolithic goddess figurines that are found throughout the Middle East and Europe and I believe also in North Africa um, the Venus of Villendorf, the Venus of Les Spug, um, those those ancient goddess figurines or well we call them goddess we don't really know how the ancient peoples really worked with them um, so yeah she is my uh, matron and I go into more detail about how I work with her in my 2017 witchy favorites video uh, which I will link below but what attracted me most about this deck is that all of the images in here are actual rock art and cave paintings from around the world it's not just the European caves in France and Spain it's from around the world, all sorts of different uh, places where different native peoples or ancient peoples created art on cave walls and on rocks. And so that is just so inspiring and just speaks to the human spirit, the human spirit of, of creation and expansion and trying to make sense of our world through, through artistic representation. It's just... This is such a powerful, beautiful deck for many, many reasons. Um, so yeah, I just, I really, really love this deck. So yeah, I highly recommend this deck as uh, it's a really good oracle deck, very powerful. Okay, what was the next deck I got? I believe the next deck I got is... One of my most favorite, perhaps my favorite, the Mary L. And I now keep the cards in this bag. So let me get those out. I don't have the guidebook, I don't believe. Um, how does this thing open? Yeah, I don't have the guidebook. I think I left that down with my husband in his apartment in Georgia. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Mary L. I haven't worked with this deck probably in a couple months at least. Um, I did uh, dye or paint the edges black to match the border and the back of the cards. This deck was a gift to me from my husband. And this is one of, if not my most favorite decks. It is. It has a reputation of being an intense deck, and I think it deserves that reputation. Um, Marie White, she painted all of the images on these cards. These are all oil paintings that she created. The deck kind of has its own system, and it is very shadowy. It is very crone energy. It is very, very intense. So there's, there's a time and a place for using this deck. I mean, look at this. This is the tower. It's the Statue of Liberty in flames. Intense imagery. Um, and that is what attracted me most to the deck. Um, it just... I, there's, there's an emotional connection I have with this deck that I, I have trouble putting into words. I know this deck can be kind of hit and miss. It, some people love it, some people hate it. Um, but this working with this deck, I have received some of the most powerful and empowering messages that I've, I've ever received in my life. <laughs> um, so 
Yeah, I mean, just look at this Ten of Swords. Each of the tens in the, the suits are like the right, uh, the horsemen of the apocalypse, right? So the Ten of Swords, the swords being the intellect, this is ego death right here. The death of an aspect of the ego that you need to let go in order for growth and change to happen. And look how just ghastly and powerful and haunting that image is for the Ten of Swords. It's just, oh my god, I love it. Look at the Queen of Swords. Look at that eyeball and that raven. Oh. I, um, god, I love this deck. So this was a gift to me from my husband because he knew I wanted it. And he surprised it. Uh, it was a surprise gift from him. And uh, yeah, it's so powerful and so beautiful. So I believe the next deck that I got for myself is the Tarot Apocalypsis. And if you've been following me in my channel for any time, you know that my academic work involves the apocalypse. <laughs> Um, so when I first found out that there was a deck called Terra Apocalypsis, I just knew I had to have it. I had to. And this is by the same creators of the, um, Terra Illuminati, I believe. Eric C. Dune and Kim Huggins. I got the set with this beautiful box and this amazing guidebook. Um... The guidebook is all in color. Um, all of the major arcanas have a full page color image. And then the court cards as well. And then the minor arcanas, if I can flip to one, have a good bit of information as well as a beautiful color image of the card. And the, the idea of apocalypse is revelation insights, spiritual growth, expansion, and so here's the back of the cards. Um, all of the cards come from different cultures, the different suits come from different mythologies and cultures, like the pentacles are from Southeast Asia, the swords are from more Norse cultures and myth, the cups are Greco-Roman, and the wands are Egyptian. Look at that Queen of Swords, that badass Norse queen spinning the weird. <laughs> I know a little bit about Norse mythology, but not, not too much. And um, yeah, it's, this deck is great if you want to learn about other cultures. It's, I love the diversity of the deck. Um, I love that each card, um, each card has a story, and the story that they tell is very detailed, very well researched. They include footnotes in their descriptions of the cards, and each figure in the card represents either a historical person or a historical moment or aspect of that culture or a mythological figure. Um, just look at this hierophant. It's the Dalai Lama. It's just so amazing, and I love the artwork. It's um, digital, digital print art, and it's just so colorful and in-your-face and powerful. The Princess of Wands. Yeah, instead of pages, we have princess. Instead of knights, we have prince. Look at that King of Cups. I think that's supposed to be um, Apollo, if I remember correctly. It's just, it's so over the top. Over the top is a great word. And it's, it's over the top in all the right ways. So my next deck is the Animal Spirit Oracle, or the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Oracle. Of course, this is by the same creator as the famous Wild Unknown Tarot deck. I can't remember her name at the moment. Where is it? Oh... I'm blanking. Oh, and by the way, I got Buffalo. That's my poster. <laughs> um, is her name seriously not on this thing? Kim Kranz. Oh my lord. 
So this is the, the guidebook. Um, there is an official guidebook that you have to buy separately, but honestly I looked at it in the store and it didn't really do much for me. So I decided to save my money and just invest in the Oracle deck. And this is the box that it comes in. Um, so I, for some reason, the Annals, the Wild Unknown Tarot just doesn't tickle my pickle, but the Animal Spirit Oracle is gorgeous and does exactly what I needed to do. It gives very clear, clear readings. It also has helped me to connect with these animal symbols or spirits or totems or whatever you want to call them. Um, currently, I'm working with shark energy to survive and finish out the end of the semester. Um, I love that the deck is kind of divided oops, sorry, in different suits. So the circles represent spirit. Of course, the shark is in the water suit and you see the alchemical symbol here. Um, we have air as well. And uh, in each of the four suits, earth, air, fire, and water, we have animals that really exist. And then in the spirit suit, we have more mythological ideas or creatures like the black egg, for example. Or I think here, we have dragon. But this deck is just so gorgeous and so clear. And the artwork, I, I do love the artwork of the Wild Unknown Tarot, but just, I, I just couldn't vibe with it. Um, and I think the Oracle deck kind of gives me a little bit more flexibility to play around with the meanings of the cards. Uh, and that flexibility helps me connect more with, uh, with the deck in general. I, I just, I love this deck. The cardstock is great. I love that it's more matte. It's not too glossy. Look at that firefly. It's so pretty. And so, yeah, um, I recently have reconnected with this deck. It's been several months since I've pulled it out, but the shark energy is exactly what I needed. So I've had that card up on my altar as a daily reminder to be focused and fierce like a shark <laughs> as I close out this semester. And I love also the animals that she decided to include. Um, one of my favorite cards, I don't know if I'll be able to find it quickly, is actually uh, Earthworm. Like, she included an earthworm card. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. And I have a strange affinity for earthworms. Um, I've always kind of enjoyed their presence. I used to pick them up and kind of hunt them when I was a kid. Uh, I know worms are slimy and gross, but um, I'm not going to be able to find it now. Oh, look at otter. Otter is so cute. Anyway, but like just, it's not, she didn't just include the badass animals like lions and tigers and wolves and, you know, she also included the more humble creatures that we also depend on. I mean, earthworms are essential for the health of the, of the soil and therefore the health of the plants that we eat, you know, um, and I love this depiction of the deer. I love that she chose a doe. And there's my Thai food. Hold on. All right, I got my Thai food takeout, or actually delivery. My belly is full, so let's continue. So this, of course, is the Green Witch Tarot by Llewellyn. Um, this is the box everything came in. And the guidebook is really, really great. Um, lots of information. I, I really, really love this deck. Um, it's a very gentle, very pagan kind of deck. I mean, it is the Green Witch Tarot. The artwork is very sweet and colorful. Um, there's a variety of ages and body shapes in this deck. It's not racially or, I guess, ethnically um, diverse, but I think that's because 
in my imagination, I I view this as um, what Western Europe was like or could have been like before Christianity or if Christianity never happened. <laughs> that's that's my idea, or that's the um, the uh, imaginative world that I. I enter into when I work with this deck. Oh, I love this. And so strength, it's the crone. So some of the, the major arcana cards are changed. Um, instead of the devil, we have nature. Very fascinating card. The lady and the lord instead of the lovers. So, yeah, I, I really love this deck. It's a very healing kind of energy deck, a very wise woman crone kind of deck, but not in the same crone way as the Mary L. This is more like, I mean, look at this lady. She, she can tell you some wisdom. You know, she can tell you how to use that wand and how to grow those flowers, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I really, really love this deck. Okay, the next deck we have is an oracle deck. It is the Oracle of Echoes by Anatorian. Anatorian is a pretty well-known deck creator. This is the box that it came in. And the Oracle of Echoes is just a very beautiful, um, but also haunting kind of oracle deck. I mean, look at this. This is a very <laughs> uh, typical kind of card. It's it's sorrow, and you literally have the eyes with the tears running down. It's very whimsical, but kind of in a a dark, the dark side of whimsical kind of way. Um, this is a really great deck to use for shadow work, um, for. Uh, deep work, I guess is the best word that I can think of for it now. I mean, just look at that crawling out of the lion's mouth. A warning. Yeah, it's very haunting, it's very whimsical, it's very just beautiful. Vulnerability. It just, the, the key words and the images just go so well together. And one of the reasons why I got this deck or um, was to work on my depression. And when I learned that there was actually a depression card in this deck, and just seeing the vulnerability of the figure in this card and just the position the body is in, it just, I just knew that's when I, I needed to work with this deck, that this deck could teach a lot um, to me about my own journey with depression um, and uh, self-care and self-love. I love this intuition card. Just look at that stairway to heaven opening up through the third eye and the crown. It's just so amazing. Oh, I love this one too. The ancestors, it's tree roots. And then if you look closely, you see the figures and the roots. It's just... It's so deep. It's so deep and intense sometimes. This is definitely more on the intense side of things. Um, but it's very, very beautiful. Look at that trust, handing your heart to someone. Very beautiful and powerful. I've gotten very, very powerful messages from this deck. And next we have the Mother Mary Oracle, and I recently talked about this in my 2017 Witchy Favorites video, because I believe I got this uh, sometime in March, maybe? I can't exactly remember when I got it this year, but it is Alana Fairchild's The Mother Mary Oracle. Do I have the book? Let me see if I or the box, rather. Yeah. Here's the box. Blue Angel Publishing, very nice box, and um, the artwork is by Shiloh Sophia McLeod, 
And this deck just helps me in my work with the Mother Mary, the Virgin Mary, and all of her different manifestations. And it's just such a powerful and gentle, loving deck. It's I'm so, so glad I got this deck. Um, I've gotten some really interesting insights and messages from this deck. It's a it's a great deck to reach for when you need you need to be vulnerable and you're looking for comfort but also a, a really good message to help you through those those times that make you feel vulnerable, <laughs> I guess. I mean, look at that. Look at that artwork. Look at all those layers of color and different textures and shapes. It's just so, so powerful. So feminine. I, I love it. So beautiful. So, the Mother Mary Oracle. And then in, I believe in October, I got another Alana Fairchild deck with artwork by Rasuli. This is the Rumi Oracle. I've always been interested in uh, the different uh, mystical traditions or Western mysticism, be it Jewish mysticism in the form of the Kabbalah um, and things like that, or Islamic mysticism in the, in the form of Sufism or Christian mysticism. So um, this deck works with the poetry of Rumi and it's really really great because at the beginning of each card's description you have a translation of a selection of one of Rumi's poems. And then of course after the the translation of the selection of Rumi's poetry you have Alana Fairchild and how she um, extrapolates on that and you get the sacred honoring ritual before you move on to the next card meeting. Um, so really great guidebook and really just beautiful beautiful deck with beautiful key phrases and meanings like sacred convergence divine mother manifests. I mean look at that sacred soul sister from nothing to everything I love that it's just it's so cosmic dance of the divine feminine it's it has such a cosmic feel and yet such an earthly feel and a feminine feel and a divine feel to it it's just so powerful um, I've gotten lots of really powerful affirmations and uh, meditations from this deck. The imagery is just so provocative. Uh, enter the Garden of Delights. I love that. It's, it's full of vulnerability and passion, like passion in the, the mystical and spiritual sense where your relationship to the divine is described as the relationship between the lover and the beloved, right? The active and the receptive. It's just so, so wonderful. Arise. She offers the sacred wine, so drink. I love that. <laughs> I want some sacred wine. So yeah, that is the... Rumi Oracle, also by Alana Fairchild. Okay, we have time traveled and also stepped through a wormhole and we are in Georgia now and it's January 7th. <laughs> I was editing this video and I realized while editing that I left out some very important decks. Uh, <laughs> And so, here at the last minute before I upload this, let me just go through the decks that I left out. Um, first, I'll go through one of my copies of the Smithwaite 
Centennial Edition. I mentioned this when I talked about my copy of the Yellow Box Rider Waite Smith. This is my husband's copy, by the way. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, this copy, the Centennial Edition, but then I forgot, while I was still in Massachusetts, I forgot to talk about it and record it. <laughs> so I am, like I said at the beginning of this little clip, I'm in Georgia right now, still Christmas break for me. Um, I'm in the process of organizing my move back to Georgia, which will happen the last weekend in January. So a lot of my deck, well all of my decks besides this one, and the very last deck I'll talk about, which will be the next clip you're going to see, they're all up in Massachusetts. Um, so unfortunately I only brought the mini Centennial Edition. But I also have the larger normal size Centennial Edition, um, which I got during my trip to Salem. And I have a Salem haul um, video that I put up back in October, which I'll have a little thing pop out here, but I'll also include the link in the, the description box below. But yeah, so I have the mini version and I have the regular version. So I just wanted to show this. It comes in a beautiful little tin. I ordered this one off of Amazon. I got the regular size one in a, a witchy store in Salem. And I love the Centennial Edition. I love how the color scheme, how they changed the color scheme so it's not quite as gaudy and bright and in your face as the yellow box right away Smith. Um, I also love the texture, the more matte kind of finish that the cards have. There we go, here's a good example. And kind of the tea staining that they did to kind of age the deck. So yeah, this is the mini version of the Centennial Edition that I keep usually in my purse or close at hand to do a quick reading. And this was actually my reading for the month of January right here actually it was in this order <laughs> so yeah that is the centennial edition that I forgot to record back in December when I originally started putting this video together now these two decks right here soul cards one by Deborah Koff Chapin and this copy of the yellow box Rider Waite Smith belonged to my husband and I gave them to him so that he can start learning the tarot but also practice some cardomancy um, and I specifically chose the soul cards because the cards are not numbered they're not in any sort of order the guidebook has very little information so it's really oh here's the creator here uh, it's very, uh, it's an on-your-own kind of deck. You get to play around with the images and construct your own meanings with the images. And the images are just gorgeous. And I know there's a Soul Cards too. And I also know that this deck originally came out in 1995, so it's been around a while. <laughs> um, that was today's card. But the images are just, it's just so provocative and deep. And it really touches or helps you tap into parts of your brain. You can get so much from an image like this, depending on the situation you're in, depending on how you woke up that day, <laughs> how it might call to you. I just, I love the artwork in this deck. And I also love that it has no structure. Oh, this is one of my favorite cards right here. The roots going deep. So much meaning you can excavate, so to speak, from this deck and its images. So I thought this would be a great deck for him because my husband, he has a very kind of analytical mind. <laughs> it's sometimes hard for him to 
to build meaning out of something so, I don't know if the word abstract is the right word, or something so just lawless, like there are no rules to this, so you're 100% free to build your own meaning out of that. And that can be kind of intimidating for him, so I thought this deck would help him kind of get out of his comfort zone. Um, this is another one of my favorite cards. So, yeah, I am interested or looking into purchasing soul cards too, so that between him and me we will have both sets. But, I don't know why some of these cards are upside down. So yeah, these are the decks that I forgot to include or didn't have access to when I started filming this video in Massachusetts. Alright, we'll travel back in time, back to December, and back to Massachusetts to finish this up. And lastly, most recently, I purchased the Voyager Air, uh, Tarot by James Wanless, Wanless, <laughs> um, an art by Ken Knudsen, or I think that's how you say that name. This is the box. Um, this tarot is just blowing my mind. I know it's an older deck, but this is the first time that I've come across it and been able to get my hands on it. Um, it's a collage style, and in the video that I'm going to link below uh, of my 2017 Witchy Favorites, I go into more detail about how this, how I crossed paths with this deck, and the moment of like really insane synchronicity that happened that kind of helped this deck fall into my lap. I guess just really succinctly, I, um, my husband and I were talking on the phone one night and we were talking about the Voyager telescope and the last photograph it took of the Earth before it left the solar system. And then the next day, I see this when I'm just casually perusing through my local witchy tarot and books, bookstore. And I just knew, like, I had to get this. It's just... The backing is a cross-section of human DNA, a photograph of DNA. Um, the collage style is just so... powerful and intense. Um, there's photographs, there's ancient statues, there's plant material, there are people, there are hands and crystals and animals, and it's just, every time I look at these cards, I see something new and something powerful that I can learn from them, um, along with the keywords at the top of the card. I, I just, I'm in love with this deck. This is quickly becoming um, a co-favorite of mine along with the Mary L. And this deck is really fascinating, um, oh man, in so many ways, but basically instead of swords you have crystals. And um, some of the major arcana cards have been renamed and also the court cards have been renamed um, you have uh, the child woman man and sage as the court cards and instead of war uh, coins or pentacles you have worlds and each card has a really powerful um, keyword that really gives you something to think about in terms of, of the meaning of the card, like specifically the Eight of Crystals, the word synthesis, the Four of Cups, the word anger. It's just such a powerful deck. I'm, I'm just falling in love with it every time I pick it up to work with it. The Nine of Worlds is Harvest. And you have a little squirrel! <laughs> and nice autumnal colors and imagery. It's it's so beautiful. I I really, really love this deck. I'm so glad I picked it up. 
So yeah, that is the most recent addition to my tarot and oracle card collection. So I hope you enjoyed this flip through and I hope everyone is enjoying their holidays, whatever you're celebrating. And uh, probably the next time you'll see, you'll see a video from me, it'll be January. So until next time, many blessings and Happy New Year.